Are we recording audio? You seem kind of irritated today. That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> you we're okay? The, we're in the vibe, guys. I am okay. Yeah. You seem like you said you were hungry. Um, we'll get you some food afterward. I had an interesting lunch before we started. You know those vegetarian hot dogs? I bought those like fancy ones that came each individually wrapped in plastic. That weren't as good? I liked them. I did, but I had one. There was one that was in the fridge for a while, and so I cooked it today. And it's boiling and boiling and boiling. And then I go to take it out of the pot. And I, the fork won't even go into the hot dog. Like, it won't even go in. And I'm stabbing pretty hard. I'm going, like, several times. And I'm like, what is going on? And I realized I cooked it in the plastic. <laughs> and so <laughs> I literally had to squeeze a hot hot dog out of the plastic. Oh. It burned, burned my hands a little bit. Tell me you didn't eat it. I did. You know how you're not even supposed to heat things up on a plastic plate in a microwave? I thought about it, and I thought <laughs> if something gets, like, if I start to act really weird during the podcast, you can, you'll can you know that's why. Wait, also, you had this for breakfast? No, for lunch, Maggie. It's, like, afternoon. I know. I haven't had lunch. I'm hungry. I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we better get started. We better get started. Let's roll that intro music. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll that intro music. Max and Dad's. Did I say roll that intro music? I don't know what you said. I said it's what I meant to say. My, my mouth is still warming up. <laughs> la 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 la. I found out something very interesting today. Oh yes. Crocs aren't waterproof. Well, there's holes in them. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that makes yes. sense. And you yeah, it makes sense. But part of the sense that was made in my mind before this realization was they're rubber. They're like rain boots. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not. No, they're not. They're also probably pretty slippery. No, I like them. It's, they're cute. I was told I look like a, actually, no, I said I look like a highlighter today because everyone kept saying I look very bright. Yep. You probably because I'm wearing green neon. Green neon top on. Mm hmm. Yep. And I, get, I just got a haircut. It looks like you just got your shirt cut because it's, you know, but that's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Here's the funny thing. Yep. When you're home, and I'm going to say when you're home from college, because I feel like that's what like most people in this demographic relate to of like coming home. But mm -hmm. coming home from anything, like if you've moved away or whatever, you revert to dressing like your high school self. Mm. Because you've got a bunch of clothes there that didn't quite make the cut for packing. Oh, I see. <laughs> and you're like, part of you is like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to wear these because I haven't in a while. Or in your case, that. you're like, I'll just go back in dad's closet and get some more of his clothes. Yeah, absolutely. That's your sweatshirt right there that I brought. Nice. Um, but no, I remember a while ago, a few breaks ago, I called Aiden and we both kind of made fun of how each other were dressing. And then we realized it's because we're wearing clothes we wore sophomore year of high school. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, but no, it's fun. It's Going also, home is always, it never gets old. Yeah. Except what's weird is when your parents move and then move again, move a couple times, then your home's no longer like your childhood home and... And then it's it's still special, but it's just different. Yeah. You haven't had that experience yet. I haven't had that experience. My I grew up in the same house that I come home to. Never moved except when I moved. And you used to be very adamant. You don't want us to move for that reason. Yeah, I'm a very, I'm, I'm really working on it, but I'm a very sentimental person. I tie a lot of feelings to objects and places. So I get very attached to things very easily. Not people, but <laughs> you don't get attached to people. I really don't. <laughs> certain people, certain people. But I get attached to <laughs> places and and objects a lot easier. And so that was a big thing with like they're easier to have a relationship with. That's for sure. No, to, true. To with a place and an object. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. M no. Much less complicated. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was one reason why I kept a lot of childhood clothes for a long time, and then finally. It's all it's all a brain game to me. So I have to justify things and then I'm good. And so if I am giving away a bunch of clothes and I'm like, no, sentimental value, I have to flip a switch in my brain that's like, but somebody else needs this more. And then I'm like, I'm good. It, it can all go. So I gave away practically like maybe like 60% of my clothes before I moved to LA. Yeah. 
And then I only took about like 10%. And then I had a bunch of people say like, I, when people come over, I give them like little house tours or whatever. And in my closet, they'll be like, oh, these are all your clothes? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, things will just come into your life and you'll get more clothes. And what happens is everything that comes into your life as you get older, you realize it's just a future decision for yourself or for somebody else. Eventually, somebody's going to have to get rid of this thing or decide where it goes and what what you're going to do about it. And so if you can develop that that habit or ability to make those decisions and get things out of your life, you're saving yourself or someone else a lot of future trouble. And if you're struggling in a place like I was in that sort of sense of holding on to things that you just know you should be able to let go and you might need somebody to talk to about that. And if that is your case, then we have a terrific sponsor for you today. Yes, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk a lot about BetterHelp on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas that surround mental health. For example, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go get therapy, but that's just not true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you to avoid those lows. A lot of people think that therapy is for so-called crazy people, but therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions and that we need to learn how to control them and not avoid them. Let's break the stigma. I've been in therapy. Dad, have you gone to therapy? I have gone to therapy a couple Incredible. times. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so that's you two know what? Out not two only that, house. but I've been learning a lot about therapy. Like the books I've been reading lately have been about how our body stores trauma. And how everybody mm-hmm. experiences trauma. It's like you can't live a life on this planet without experiencing something in your life that affects you later. And it exists in your experiences and thoughts and in your body in different ways. And it takes help from a professional to unpack those things. And once you do, you can deal with uh, a lot in your life much in a much more healthy way. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to be seen on camera or see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. So give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Mags and Dad's Wholesome Chaos listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Wholesome. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash wholesome. Something I think is so crucial and was like one of the biggest things for me in like just becoming more in touch with my feelings and therapy and everything like that is taking back things that you once truly enjoyed, but for some reason got ruined for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And not just saying, oh, I. Even like after a breakup, like, oh, I can't go to that place anymore because of all those feelings. It's like, no, enjoy it. Like, don't, don't. Take it back. Yeah, don't live your life with things that you just can't enjoy. Or like um, on last week's podcast, remember the passion that you brought into the thing that maybe you got burned out on or whatever, for whatever reason, it's not as special to you. Yeah. I have that. That was like with my skills in life, with juggling and unicycling and all those things that like were such a part of my job because I was doing shows, I forgot that the reason I got into them is because I really love those skills. Mm-hmm. And once I got into practicing again, that was another way to like build on that. Yeah. Hey, what did you think of last week's podcast? It was fun. It was so fun. I Just listening back to it. And if you haven't um, heard that podcast yet, please make it a point to go back and do it because it was very special. We went into a studio with the whole family, with Maggie's brother, Eddie, and with uh, Shay, her mom, my wife. And it was just a really cool conversation. And watching it back and listening to it back, um, I just was so proud of you guys for both stepping up uh, and for sharing so much about your lives. I learned a lot about your lives that I didn't even know. And just the conversations I, I thought we had were, were really helpful um, for us and for hopefully for other people as well. Yeah. So here we are at the start of the year. And, you know, just like we mentioned with, with better help, and you're talking about getting introspective about some things in your life that maybe you've fallen out of love with or whatever it may be, it's a great time to really think about how do you want to be different in the new year? And we, we talked about that a little bit um, in, with regards to our own lives, but I thought maybe we could suggest some ideas for people to consider or think about in their lives. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, health. Like physical fitness, health, nutrition would be a great way to 
think about like what do you how how do you want to feel going forward the energy that you carry with you the the things you do you know that would be one way yeah i uh i got a juicer for christmas which i'm so excited about i can't use it yet because we can't unpack it all and then ship it to california It'll just be complicated. I mean, we could, but we're not going to. Um, <laughs> but something I want to be intentional about is really putting, like, a lot of nutrients in my body. Um, I joke with some of my friends back in L.A. that for the longest time I ate uh, a cream cheese bagel with tomatoes as every single meal. Yep. Which I guess it's not a joke because it's true. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Not anymore. But Good. it was it was a lot of different food groups. You have your you have your bread. Carbohydrates. And then you have your dairy, which mm-hmm. well now I, I eat a lot less dairy. I'm trying to go more plant-based. Tomatoes. Um, and then tomatoes. Which is technically a fruit and a vegetable. And then an iced coffee. And coffee. <laughs> Caffeine. That's a food group. Yeah. yeah. But with like oat milk. So oat there's milk. oats. <laughs> also plants. <laughs> Yeah. No, but I, I do want to eat better, which doesn't Juicing's mean- Juicing is going to help with that. Yeah. And when I say better, I don't mean like diet at all. I mean, fill my body with better things. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, it's not a matter of, of fuel. calories. It's food a for fuel, not food for, to just fill sustenance. you up or or even just eating for pleasure, you know, no. but eating for like, because you, you, you run pretty, pretty hard in your life. You need good quality, high octane fuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and other ways you can improve yourself. You can improve a relationship. You can improve what you're learning, what you're reading. You know, you could make all kinds of different like commitments at the top of the year to think about in terms of changes and positive improvements. Mm-hmm. Um, you could drink more vitamin C, which is what <laughs> I got right here in this cup because we were given the option of berry tea or vitamin C. Yes, and but- mom, mom gave us warm water, so like it's it's hot water actually. Yeah. To because it's better for your voice, which is very thoughtful. Yes. And then she said, "You have the option of berry tea, which I got, or emergency powder, <laughs> which was what Maggie got in her hot water. So she's drinking hot yeah. water with an emergency in it. It's an how, interesting. How is it? It's, it's better growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get both. I wonder what would happen if I said both. I thought you did say both. And I then did, you and then you didn't fall through. I didn't fall through. Okay. Okay. Um, I thought it was also funny that mom spilt a bunch of water all over the table. And my dad walks in and goes, oh, you spilt water all over the table. Yeah. And then mom said, no, I didn't. (laughs) And I literally for a second thought she couldn't see it. Like, are you at a weird angle where you can't tell the table is covered in water? So he he proceeded to repeat, no, you spilt water all over the table. I'm serious. I see it right there. Let me go get some paper towels. (laughs) So that was... So that we do have some questions medium. from listeners, but they're wet at the moment. But I think mm-hmm. I can still read them later when we get to that. Yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of how you change yourself, so so think about you know why to change. If there's something that you want to change, a sense of motivation is really important. So why is this important to you? Who will you be on the other side? How will you be more capable and better as a result? So really work on the why and then think about the what. We've talked about some answers for what, but your answers will be very, very different. And then the third question is how to change. So how do you change a habit? I was going to make a joke about how I usually start with my pants, like changing (laughs) clothes, but none of, I played it out of my head and it didn't sound good. (laughs) But then I still proceeded to say the joke. Um, Which made it funnier. (laughs) How do you change your pants, Maggie? (laughs) Which leg do you put in first? That's the question. Right, I'd say. I'd say that's right. Right? Right. Because here's the thing that I struggle with that you guys probably don't is mm-hmm. there's a lot of holes in my jeans. Yeah. So a lot of the times, <laughs> no, it's true. So you actually got to be careful to get that foot all the way down the oh pants Oh my gosh, leg. no, it happens all the time where you, your foot will get and stuck. And that's why the rips get bigger and bigger. Yeah, and so in 2022, I plan to change a little more carefully. <laughs> Maybe to, while sitting down. Or to change your pants and get pants without holes in it. No, <laughs> that's, that's not on my list. Okay. What was the question though? I have forgotten. How do you, ch- how do you make a change? Like if oh. say, say you have a, a why, you have a reason that you want something to be different in your life, and then you have an idea of what you want to be different. Mm-hmm. How do you do it? Uh, plan. I mean, plan, but do. You know, find the little things. If you say, okay, I want to be able to run a mile, 
Again, this is not my goal. I am not a runner, nor can I run a mile. Yeah, you can. I can, but I there's a high chance I'm going to pass out after and have seizure-like activity. <laughs> <laughs> but then maybe don't say like, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to run a mile right now. Maybe start with a half mile. And just find those things that you can immediately implement and go for it. Yep. Incremental goals. One way I was thinking about it, and I think this is going to be my next weekly video, is changing from the outside in and from the inside out. So you like approach it from two directions. From the outside in is like looking for the inspirations and the kind of external activities, like things you can read and learn and things you can do or emulate or schedules and whatnot. Like you, you got the plan. Like you said, you got to put it in your day planner. You got to figure out the steps to get you to whatever it is you want. And then from the inside out is about changing the way I think about it. It's your own self image the perspective that you have about yourself. Like, for example, say you want to become more fit. Like, I just want to get healthy. You're still thinking about yourself as not healthy. Like, you want to get to a state where you have experienced health. Well, one of the ways to do that is just start to think, I'm aligning to health. I am healthy. Like, if I see myself as a healthier person, I'm just going to naturally start to make choices that are healthier about what I eat, what I do, Etc. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. The whole package, outside yeah. in and inside out. If you couldn't tell, my dad's a motivational speaker, and yeah. By the way, you... I'm Dan. It's Maggie. <laughs> oh yeah, crap. we forgot we to do intros start again. Introducing ourselves. I'm Mags Maggie. I'm Dan Thurman, <laughs> Maggie's dad, Eddie's dad, I'm Shay's husband, also a Thurman. Yeah, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> We're really bad at intros. <laughs> We're also like 20 minutes in. Um. But yes, I was going to say, my dad's a motivational speaker. And so if you're looking to start your new year with some motivation, he does weekly videos. You can find him. You can Google him. Um, Thank you. That's super yeah, sweet. Of course. I, I'm going to, you know, put you out there so you don't have to. Wonderful. It's always nice when somebody else promotes you so you don't have to, like, shamelessly self-promote or shamefully self-promote. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I try to do. I try yeah. to promote you. I try to promote Eddie. Oh. I try to promote mom as much as I can. I appreciate it. But there that. is a there is an art to shameless self-promotion. Mm -hmm. Like being like knowing your value and knowing the opportunity to put it out there and not missing those moments when you have those moments. It's really important. Yeah, I don't do that very much. Yeah, you'll get better at it cuz it becomes a necessity and when you realize like well that's really why people get ahead. It sounds wrong. It sounds like it's not fair or not true or shouldn't be true, but it is. It's like you get what you ask for. And so if you're the kind of person who can constantly go into a situation and say, yes, you should hire me. I should be doing this for you. And, and by the way, that I'm not going to take, take no for an answer. So the first couple times you might blow me off, but I'm going to be persistent. That's a big skill that I don't really have either. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been watching a lot of TV lately. Um, well, that's because we're Playing the uh, you know inside game, we're yeah. keeping a low profile before New Year's. Yeah, COVID cases are spiking, and so we're staying home, chilling out. Well, we're um, trying to keep you healthy, super. Yeah, I'm, most. I'm most going important. back to set soon, and so I do not want to bring any diseases with me. And luckily, we all like each other and we're friends, <laughs> so we just. And there's Netflix. So. There's Netflix. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! So we've been doing this thing where if it's even if it's not that early, we can watch one episode of something and then watch the entire season that night. We did that with, what was the first thing we did that with? Oh, yeah, the uh, the Hawkeye. The Hawkeye Marvel series. Hawkeye we Marvel watched series. that whole thing in one night. Love and it. And Shang-Chi. Yeah, Shang-Chi. But that's a movie, so that's a little different. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good. We thought good. it was a series, but it, no. Yeah, but, but we watched the whole movie in one <laughs> night. It was amazing. We got all the way to the end, which is so, saying something for me. Yeah, no, I don't, but, I don't, I don't make it to the end of a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> but we watched Hawkeye uh, like last week. We love Florence Pugh in this household. Yeah, Big she's fans. awesome. Uh, and then we watched Julie and the Phantoms, which I've seen many times. But I, I just, had never seen. Yeah, we were kind of just chilling out. And I was like, do you guys want to watch something? And they were kind of doing their own things. So they were like, put on whatever you want. 
So I was like, okay, I'll put on a nice little comfort show of mine. You were testing us. I was testing. She was you. like, I'm gonna just put on this first episode. She like really lowered our expectations. She's like, it's a kids show. It's a kids show. Like you, you know, these are for this is for middle school kids. And if you don't like it, it's okay. We don't have to watch it. Yeah. And then she started just like, and I think that was the undersell that really got me into it. Mm-hmm. And then I recognized the Sunset Curve. Like that's yep. the, you wore that sweatshirt in, in a TikTok or two mm-hmm. and people really responded to it. So I was curio- curious about it. Yeah. And no. music was great. And the music, I knew you guys would really enjoy the music. Um, and we watched the whole series. Yeah, we watched the whole series <laughs> one night. Yeah. Well, I told you, I gave you guys the heartbreaking news that there's no season two. That's unfair. I'm going to call Netflix real quick. We're going to call Netflix on the podcast. I'll put them on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. No, se- no season two yet. No, like they they'll make a comeback. They officially got told that there's no season. Yeah, I don't believe it. Yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, what was? And then we watched. I watched Emily in Paris, and so now we're gonna watch season two together because my parents had already seen season one, and my mom and I are both learning French. <laughs> I think you just want to dress like Emily in Paris. Oh my goodness. If I had the budget. <laughs> yeah. If I had the budget and the time to go find all those incredible pieces. Um, but no, that show's so fun. We've got three questions, so we should start. Get them in the episode here. <laughs> Number one, absolutely love the podcast. And now that I'm all caught up, I get very impatient for Wednesdays. I'd love to hear more about the family's musical skills and experiences, everything from the infamous intro music to Berkeley to potential future singing and songwriting endeavors. As a fellow musician, I've, I'm always interested to learn about people's journeys with music. Thank you so much, Mags and Dan. Go ahead. Um, wait, what was, the, what was the question in it? Just more about our Yeah, just tell us music. more about your journey with music. Yeah, so the intro music... Um, or just music in your life. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just starting here. Um, intro music. Eddie, my brother, who is a music student at Berkeley College of Music, he created that, and then I just recorded the vocals for it. Um, I grew up singing, grew up writing music as kind of like a coping thing. Um, did a lot of musical theater growing up. But music production is definitely something that I have not enjoyed. Um it's just, it's it's a lot, and I'm a lot more of a, like, I just like to get my emotions out there. And I think, I've said before that I don't want to pursue music because I don't want to be the girl who tries everything so nobody takes her seriously for anything. And I'm really serious about acting, and that's really, that was, like, my first thing as a kid. It mm-hmm. was, like, acting, acting, acting. We did some acting when I was a kid, and so now I'm really excited to, like, be coming back to that. Um, I'm excited for you too. That's really, I love the, and again, momentum, like we were talking about last week, you've got some momentum there. So that's where you're like yeah. hitting the gas. But I've never really wanted to put music out there. And that's that's one of the things where it's like, I have put music out. It's no longer out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I took it back. Um, that was one of the things I felt like I got more kind of pushed into and like pressured into of like a, no, you need to do this. Um, well, it's, it's, again, it's, you know, as parents trying to, um, support your kids' interests and skills, and you're very good at writing music. I appreciate it. You, that. you write beautiful songs. But I prefer writing than, do, than, like, do, than performing the person. Them. I'd rather, like, you'd like, rather sell, sell songs. music. So that was the intention. It's like, if you produce demos, basically, if you if you say to somebody, hey, I've got a song, if you'd be interested in, like, buying it or selling, you know, you sell them the song, you have to have a demo. And yeah. so that was the first intention of even going into the studio was let's produce some some quality demos but of again, some songs. But again, that's not really like what I want to be doing. I know. Especially at this point in my life. Um, but you're good at it, by the way. It, I appreciate and, and, that. and when you were in the studio, and that was the other intention is like getting you in the studio um, and we would produce it so that the next time you're in the studio, you already feel comfortable in the studio. Which I do. I feel a lot more comfortable. Like doing your own that. harmonies and stuff like that. You got great at that. Thank you. Well, I also, that was a big thing of, of theater was true. lots and lots of harmonies and being able to but do But we that. got pretty far down that road. Like like we produced multiple songs and parts of other songs. and Yeah. Yeah. But it is not something I am interested in furthering at the moment. I got to play drums on one of the tunes. Yeah, um, I'll be releasing that on my Spotify channel. 
Come uh, dance drums. But yeah, and that <laughs> that was the interesting thing too, is I feel like I also really found this out during like music production was I'm I'm a songwriter, not a not a perf- I, not even like I am a performer, but when we would get critiques from like our friends and stuff, when Eddie and I would work on a demo and then like send it off to Mark Schulman or something like that, who is like one of my dad's friends and is pink strummer and just a very accomplished musician. What I, every time what I was listening for in the feedback was like, okay, but what did he think of the song? Like, what did he think of the structure, the lyrics, like all of this stuff? I didn't really care if it, what he thought about the singing. And that's kind of when I realized like, Oh, I care about like the So you're still writing music? Um, not recently, but when I do, it's for me. Do you prefer to write on guitar or piano? Yeah, because you don't have a piano. Depends on the length of my nails. (laughs) 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 Um, but yeah, that's my experience with music. I love music. I think it's incredible. All right, um, I'll start with me. So so basically, I loved music, listening to music. <laughs> You'll start with you <laughs> right after I finish giving my answer. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to start with me and then segue into my perspective on you guys. So um, no, I, I always was a huge fan of music, especially when I was younger. I got into jazz. I know that sounds weird, but when you're a young juggler, you're looking for routines that you could perform to, and instrumental music was just really cool. And by juggling to music and choreographing physical skills to music, I really got into like the nuances of the intricacies of what all the instruments were doing. I didn't play any music. Like I never had lessons. I might've had a couple like organ classes or piano classes early on. Um, My first instrument was drums. My buddy Philip taught me drums. Did you say organ? Yeah, Wendy had an organ. (laughs) Like like an actual, a big (laughs) organ. It was like a, it's a massive organ in our tiny house in Chicago. It was the weirdest thing. Like we didn't have piano. We had an organ. That's so strange. I know. It was a crazy thing. I think it was like, and at the time it was a ridiculous purchase for my family to make because we didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. But it was like an $8,000 organ. Oh my goodness. Like, I think they had to finance it. Yeah. Why? Because, you know, the love of music. I don't know. It's an interesting story, but <clears throat> I digress. <laughs> Actually, you, you made me digress. <laughs> so drums, Philip taught me to play drums. I taught him to juggle. That was our deal. But I never had like technical drum lessons. And then one of my life list goals was to learn to play guitar. And one day in college, I just decided today's the day. I went into a music store and I said, um, I'm going to learn to play guitar, but I don't play guitar. I'm going to buy a guitar today. That's what I said. I'm going to buy a guitar today, but I don't play guitar. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go around the store you're going to play me like five, six different guitars and then I'm going to pick one and I'm going to buy it. Oh my goodness. And he's like, okay. And I did it. And like, I was like, this is my price range. And I went in and I like, and I walked out with a guitar and that's like, that's how easy it is to get started on a goal. And then I started taking lessons at college. While I was going to school, I was also taking guitar lessons and I did that for a few years. And I got to the point where I understood a little bit of theory and like, you know, music, but I was never really like a musician. I didn't consider myself a musician. I could play some stuff. I could write some stuff. I wrote a couple songs. Um, but I had enough music in me that I could kind of like expose you to it at an early age. And that was a big goal of, of me for me as a dad is to make sure music was a big part of your life. And then for Eddie, I'd say of all of us, well, I don't know, music's a very huge part of you. Eddie thinks like a musician in a different way. Like he understands mm-hmm. the, even before he went to Berkeley, he understood how music worked and he yeah. could experience it in multiple dimensions. It's just very, very different. He's technically like, yes. a musician. Yes, exactly. And so like when he brought us the intro music, <clears throat> it was, um, you know, he, he had prepared a couple different options. We were just like, let's pick that one. And then he layered it out and then you um, did the vocals and all that it was amazing. Yep. And the harmonies. See, you are a performer and it Ooh. sounds great. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. You want another question? Ask the book question. Okay. The book question. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually two questions because two different people had a similar question. 10 year old Zoe asks, Do you guys like to read any book recommendations? And then uh, Rashan from Karachi, Pakistan uh, asks, The best book you've ever read and why? So it's about books. Yeah. Like you so- said. 
Last year, I had a New Year's resolution to read one book for every month of the year. And I started with this book called 19 Minutes. I never finished that book. <laughs> <laughs> it's an incredible book, though. And honestly, it's it's at my place in L.A. and I'm going to finish it. Um, it's, yeah, it, to be fair, it was a really tough read. It's a, it's about a school shooting and, and all that stuff. Literally, I was looking at information about it because I wanted to make sure I got the name right before this. And I found out that some places, some high schools tried to ban it from being in their library. And I was mm. like, what the heck? Because if it's too traumatic? Yeah, but like that's also the reality is, is like that's something that happens and it's like based on a true story. I'm pretty, pretty sure. Um, so that was crazy. But um, I am trying to become more of a reader. But favorite book I've ever read... Um, Part of me wants to say The Fault in Our Stars because that is one book that like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My mom just said one book that you read. Um, but like also you guys, my parents like to listen to books. That's not the same as reading a book. Well, it's you're right. It's not. But we've also, you, what well, you have to know is before I started reading books, uh, listening to books, I yeah. read a lot. Yeah. I mean, all the time. Because reading is really important. I'm, I mean, I love words. And I think it's really like if you're going to write, you got to have words coming in in order to have That's better words coming out. Is when I think about it, I do read every single day, but I read my Bible, which is still a book. It's, yeah, it's, it's a good book. It's a great book. My favorite <laughs> book. Um. <laughs> so, um, were you done? Or <laughs> what book are you reading, Mom? From Woodstock to Eternity. Cool. John Cooper. I just I just finished an amazing book called The Choice, which I got the recommendation on TikTok. Is that the one you were talking about, Mom? From Edith Ava Eggers, Eggers who was a Holocaust survivor mm -hmm. and a therapist. That's one of the people who's helping me understand therapy a little differently. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just an incredible book. You're listening to it though, right? Um, I bought the book. I bought the actual book, and I listened to it the first time, and I'm going to go back through it. So for me... Audiobooks work differently. I can consume them much faster and yeah. in the flow of my life. And so there's certain things I like to just get through on audio. Mm -hmm. and there's other things I want to go through in more detail and actually read. Yeah, and I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to books. Like, I think that's cool, but it is very different than reading. Yeah. it's a you know, you know what gave me the greatest appreciation for reading was writing. Like when I started to say, okay, I'm going to write a book. And the first time I tried to write a book, I was like, wow. It, it takes so much thought, so much time, so many years of life to, to formulate what it takes to put in a book for someone else to consume. And so think about it that way. You can consume someone's life or a huge portion of it in a matter of just a few days. Mm -hmm. And they've distilled it and concentrated it for you in that way. And so it, it, it's a, an enormous way to improve and expand your own perspectives on everything, on places of the world, on skills and abilities, and like yeah. so much education is available. And it's fun. It takes you away from whatever situation you might be in. Yeah. Um, my, the first book that really impacted me was um, Richard Bach Illusions. I remember that being just a really pivotal book, very easy to read, but it just helped me expand my own concept of self and spirit and all of that. Uh, another huge book for me is... Uh, Edgar Tolle, The Power of Now. I would say those. that's another one I listen to kind of on loop. I listen to it when I go riding in the woods on my unicycle. <laughs> that, him and Wayne Dyer. <laughs> it's very weird, but that's one of my favorite things is to listen to like spiritual text while I'm unicycling. Hmm. I listen to podcasts when I work out usually. Cool. It, I, I realize it helps me especially when I'm like running because if I'm running, I'm most likely going to match my pace to the music, which isn't always a good thing and I can get burnt out really easy. Um, but if it's a podcast, especially like a murder podcast, I'm like, I can do this. Yeah. Running. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have a good friend, uh, Lee, who I used to play golf with all, all the time. And back before I switched to a lot of audio books, we, I would read a lot more you know, physical books. Lee and I would always exchange books. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like just an understood bond. I would read anything he gave to me. He would read anything I gave to him. 
it's kind of like a, a book club, book club. Mm-hmm. and and you know we knew each other well enough to to kind of figure out something that I think you're going to like, but I also think maybe stretches you in a different way, mm-hmm. and so it would give us something really cool to talk about while we play golf. Yeah, no, that's so, awesome. That's a good way to do it. I was talking to an actor friend of mine over coffee a little while ago, and we were kind of talking about reading because he was reading this book when I came in. I was like, oh, you read? That's awesome. Because I do think everyone should read. Like, yes. I do think it's really important, and that's one of the reasons why I want to read more. Um, but we're talking about how we can read a 200-page script like that. Because, like, we're engaged, and we're like, yes, yes, I can see this. This is so good. And then, like, you give us a book. And we're like, oh, yeah, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I'll get into this, um, which is, like, very interesting to me because they're pretty similar, but – scripts I can just go through so much faster mm-hmm. but you're them. also reading a script generally because you might be involved in yeah the project <laughs> yeah no I'm like auditioning for one of the characters so I'm like oh man I can oh I could do this and the, oh I see the parallel yeah and, and I can, am I gonna do that stunt <laughs> yeah no yeah. um so that's a little bit different motivation the other the other thing I heard one time that was um really profound was everybody says they want to read more but here's the problem books don't ring mm-hmm. like books don't call for your attention, demand your attention. And that was before even smartphones. That that quote became popular. Um, I can't remember who said it. And I don't want to guess because I'll get it wrong. But okay. books don't ring. So, you know, you imagine your phone is the thing that 100% of the time is calling for your attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and and books, you've got to make them an, a priority in your life. So yeah. Set aside some time to read every day. Yeah. Yeah. And write. Right. Another thing I heard was like everybody should have three, every writer should have three books with them uh, or two books with them. <laughs> the one they're reading and the one they're writing? Yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I thought there was a third, but I can't imagine what it would be now. <laughs> the one they're reading, the one they're writing, and the one they read on the toilet. <laughs> 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 we always had those it, at like in North Carolina where it's like you go into the bathroom and then there's I'm never there's in a there book long there. enough to read. No, I never open the books in the bathroom. Yeah. They're like the weirdest uh, one of them. It's the nev- life's too short to fold your underwear or something like that. And I've looked at that book so many times. Never once picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> They're just there. <laughs> <laughs> books are just there. That's yep. the moral of the story. Last question. And by the way, if you're enjoying this and you like these questions and you're thinking about questions that you might want to ask Maggie or myself, go to wholesomechaos.com and you can submit questions there, which we do read, and we read them all. We can't answer them all on the air. Sometimes we have to wait a while to answer them on the air. Sometimes, like one time, I took a question from the podcast and I answered it in my weekly coaching video, which by the way, I need to get back to her and tell her I did that. But nonetheless, (laughs) um, you know, we love the communication. We love to hear from you and hear about your lives and where you are and what you're working on. Okay. I'm Maggie, <laughs> another Maggie, and I'm, I'm Maggie. 13. I have a skin condition called vitiligo. I, be- I believe it's called vitiligo. Vitiligo, which makes parts of my skin not tan. I don't like how it looks. I feel like I get judged and it can spread even more. How would you or how do you guys feel better about your own appearance? Do you have any tips on how I can find a way to like my spots? Thank you. I love your podcast, Maggie. I like how she said that, to find a way to love my spots. Yeah. yeah. It's a great metaphor. I think think that's what we all have to do in some way in life. Yeah. Number one, I think that's so cool. You even see like so many models nowadays who have vitiligo. I really hope I'm saying that right. Um, But I think it's beautiful and unique and so cool. And when it comes to like, because I know, I know some days you probably feel like that and then other days you probably don't. And I think we so often get into a headspace of if I could change this one thing about myself, then I'd feel beautiful. And I feel that all the time and I catch myself doing that so much where I'm like, oh, maybe if I just, if I just dyed my hair like hers, then, then I would feel beautiful. Or if I just got a little lip filler, then, then I'd I'd feel confident. Like then I wouldn't have to worry about any of that, but it's never, that's never it. You know what I mean? Like I could go get some filler tomorrow and sure, I might feel good for a little bit, but then I'd find something else and be like, oh, well, if I just changed this one thing, then I'd feel beautiful. Like then I, 
then there'd be nothing else. Or like, then I'd just feel confident in myself. But that's not, that's not where the, it's not like where it's coming from. You know what I mean? And it's, it's comparison and it's the bad side of like toxicity culture that social media does perpetuate a lot of the times and that we just have got accustomed to. Um, so I think it really does come down to just loving the uniqueness. And like, I know that's a lot easier for me to sit here on my little podcast and say, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I truly do think that that's so cool and so unique and learning to love things that are different about you. I did that with, um, I have veins under my eyes that for a long time, people love to point out and say like, did you know that there's the table sweat? <laughs> the table. <laughs> I like, did you know that State there's the veins obvious. under your eyes? Did you like, you should, you should get that covered up or like you should go put on some concealer for that. Um, and now I think it's really cool. Now I specifically, when I even put on concealer, I usually try and avoid covering them up because I'm like, no, at least that completely. Makes, You're like, yeah, yeah, because that's not me. And also, it's really hard to cover them up. <laughs> <laughs> They're very, very pigmented. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just embracing it. Well, that's great advice, Maggie. Very, very profound. I um something that occurred to me, Maggie, that you might think about is flip it. Instead of saying, I've got this thing I've got to overcome or learn to live with and deal with. And it's just like, like Maggie was saying, embrace the uniqueness. I would say, you know, skip the whole idea that this even has to be hard for you and say immediately, wow, I've got this profound gift. And maybe part of that gift is that when you meet people, you know, you, you're very comfortable with, with how you are because you see yourself all the time. It's you um, and you love yourself. And maybe you could even be the person to break the ice and say, yeah, let me tell you what this is. I know you're asking, you're, you're wondering, and you could like have a very real, genuine conversation, take the initiative, transcend it. And like what I'm saying is like get down to the basic level of connecting as human beings instead of staying on the surface. Just go beneath the surface right away. I mean, I think that should be everyone, how everyone interacts, you know? Yeah, I love that. I love people, I admire people who can walk into a situation and immediately cut to the chase of what's happening and what's going on. And so this is a clue to your, pos your confidence. Your, the positive aspect of this is that it's a key to helping you unlock your confidence as you step into your life. And so embrace that key and learn how to use it. Yeah. Great questions this week. Yeah, this has been fun. This has been a good podcast. I agree. I almost forgot about the fact that I'm very hungry. <laughs> no, I actually did forget. But now that I've said that, I'm I'm ready to go eat. <laughs> I'm going to drink some hot emergency vitamin C. I've almost finished my cup. I haven't touched my tea. I know. Because we've been talking so much. I know. But we're going to get ready to go do that. So, friends, thank you so much for listening. Um, just like Maggie, you not this Maggie, but the, well, yes, her too. <laughs> but just like the Maggie in the, in the, in the uh, question, <laughs> You have a uniqueness inside of you. You have a strength. And I think part of the reason people like are struggling and frustrated in life and they make things hard for themselves is because they don't identify with their strength, their beauty, the things that we're good at. Um, there's something that you have inside of you right now that's so powerful and awesome and amazing. And it's easy to think everybody else has it too because it comes naturally to you, but they don't. You have a gift, right? And so... When you build from that gift and understand that and unpack that, um, it could really help you in so many ways throughout your life. And so it, if this podcast can help you in that journey, please keep listening, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, that's what we're here to do and to make you laugh along the way as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for listening. Follow us on our other socials if you want. Maggie Thurman and Dan Thurman, except on TikTok. It's Maggie's Dad 123 And yeah, we'll see you next week. I love you, Maggie. Love you, Dad. We love you too. Take care. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye. Max and Dads, wholesome chaos. Max and Dads, wholesome chaos. Do you do you have anything in specific for lunch? For lunch? Yeah. In specific. Is that a word or is that a phrase? In specific. I think the point is clear and you haven't answered the question. <laughs> well... Some plastic hot dogs are good. So I'm going to pass.